So you want to create dot grid journals? Let me show you how in Affinity Publisher, the quickest and easiest way. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to our channel where we show you how to make money online with low content products like KDP Low Content books, printables and digital planners. So as you can see, I've got a dot grid journal up or should I say a dot grid page up. I have actually done it in a black dots rather than a gray dots mainly because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing so let's dig in and get going so in Affinity Publisher this is it I'm working on a Mac but all the same things that I'm going to be showing you I will mention the shortcuts and everything that is also the exact same in Windows the first thing we want to do is we want to create a document so we're going to go file and new now Normally I'd go straight down to letter and then click on that. But on this one here, I've actually customized it to have bleed. I know you can go and put bleed down in the bottom there, but I actually find it easier just working out bleed and putting it in. So for bleed, you need to have 0.125 on one side and 0.125 at the top and 0.125 at the bottom. Remember that's all in inches because Amazon is a US company and they all work in inches. Inches, should I say. Whereas Affinity Publisher is a European country and we work in millimeters and centimeters and things like that. So anyway, get used to working in inches if you're doing KDP. So the thing I've got here is I've got inches I've got 300 dpi I've got facing pages you don't necessarily have to have facing pages I've got it on cmyk because I'm creating it for printables if I was creating it for digital planner I would probably reduce that to an rgb and I'd probably also reduce the dpi I've included margins but you don't necessarily need margins and remember that if you're doing with bleed your minimum margin is actually 0.375 so I'm going to click create and I'm also going to go on to the master page and actually add a master page here. So I've clicked at the top where it says master pages. And then I'm actually going to create a single one. Again, I'm going to keep the margins the same. Again, I'm going to click everything the exact same. And you'll notice that I've actually got this sort of grid on. To get that on, you go command or control apostrophe. And that's took it off and that's put it back on. So how do we actually change this so it's the right size? So if we go to view and we go to grid and axis, we actually come to our grid and snapping axis and we can go to basics and then we can type in the exact amount that we want. You can also set your presets. You'll see that there are some already set up. I've actually set some of these up for myself. So I've got like college ruled with um, heights with dots. So I don't actually want that. What I want is to actually create my own. So I can go into that. I want to do a quarter of an inch, which is 0.25. And I can then tab across. And I can also now create that as a preset. And now I've got a dot grid preset. So I can click create. So now every time I want my dot grid, I can actually just come in and click on the preset. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually draw out our shape. I've already got selected my ellipse tool, but if your ellipse tool is not selected, just make sure you click on the drop down and then you'll find it in this toolbar here. So to draw it out, hold shift and command down and it gives you the exact shape that you want. So I actually want 0.25 for this, just so you can see it. If I can't get that exact, it doesn't matter. I'm going to let go of my mouse and then I'll let go of my keys. Now you'll see here where it says width and height and it's giving me at 0.217. I can actually change it and I can actually resize everything there. And if I press tab key, because I've got this link chained, it's actually done to the right size for me. It is rather big if we have a look. And also if I change the color to black I need to click on it so I'm going to click on the move tool click there and then I'm going to change it to black so you can actually see it I am actually going to bring that size down so I'm going to do 0.125 and then tab and that's a better size okay 
Now I want to move it into position. I basically want to put it there so that I can start tabbing across and doing everything. And the best way of doing that is to make sure you've actually clicked on it and instead of moving it by hand and trying to see exactly what to do, I'm going to use this transform here. I'm also going to want it to be in the center. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see that this enable transform origin has also come up. And then I'm going to do 0.25 and 0.25. And you'll see that that moves straight up to that line there. Now the next bit. So I'm also going to zoom in so you can actually see things a bit better. So you're not seeing that. I'm going to use the H for hand tool. And that brings me straight back up here. So you can actually see it. You can see it's lined up. Then I'm going to press V on my keyboard and that has reselected it. So it's basically the move tool. So the shortcut for the move tool is V. Then what I'm going to do is command J, which is to duplicate or control J on Windows. Then I'm going to actually go back down here and then on my X axis, I'm just going to add a plus or addition sign 0.25 and I'm going to tap and it's moved across. I don't have to do that again. All I now need to do is just keep going command J and duplicating. And as you can see, it is moving everything across. And we can see that the size of this is absolutely massive compared to everywhere else. And I have gone overboard, so I don't want all of those. So all I do is get the move tool and select all of those ones. Probably haven't got every single one, but I'll go and make sure. Yeah, I've got every single one. And as you can see, they're all on that grid. So we know that they're all spaced to that size. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group it all the way down. Remember, you need to do a lot smaller size. So about a 0 0.025 is actually quite a decent size for a dot grid journal. Then I'm going to, because I've highlighted that, I want to group it. So it's Command G or Control G on your keyboard, and that is grouped. Now I'm going to do duplicate that group. So Command J or Control J. And now I'm going to use the Y axis. So I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to type plus 0.25. I'm going to press Enter. And I've got that again. And I'm going to now do command J all the way down just so it actually fills in and I've probably gone too way too far. Oh, I haven't. So command J till I get down to the bottom and there we go. We actually now have a dot grid journal. Yes, they are all, <laughs> all massive and you can go in and probably change every group. So hold the shift key down, go inside that group. Hang on that down. I can change the size of them, but I wouldn't want to do it. I'd have to do it individually. So we'll not do that. In fact, the size should be about, it'll be on this bottom one. Let me just go to the bottom. If I change that, you'll actually see if it, if I go to 0 0.25, you'll actually see it becomes quite a decent little size for doing a dot grid. So I would suggest that you do that specific size, 0 0.025, and that'll give you a decent size. But there is your dot grid journal, quickly, easily done. And you've done it on the master page. So you can just come here. You can just go onto the master page, apply master and select the one you've got. You might have more than one master. You might do college pages, line pages, whatever. And then you can click OK. And now it'll be on that page ready for you to print out or work. And again, like I say, those dots are massive. It was just to actually show you how to do it. Basically, you're aiming to get 
small dots like that for a dot grid journal. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified about any other videos I make. I make lots of videos showing you different softwares, how to actually create different products for low content products like KDP books and printables and digital planners.